I made a video about connecting mixing desks up to audio interfaces and how to use older analog stuff like this with computer systems. And I got many questions on it and most of them were basically the same. I sort of missed out things and made assumptions. So here's take two from a Duff video that I made before. I'm going to try and explain in sort of, you know, practical terms and with diagrams as well, how all this is connected. Let's have a look. So here I have a 25 year old mixing desk feeding a six year old sound card that goes into a two year old computer. So they are all from different eras rather. Now, why would we use something like this? This is old hat. It's surely noisy, crackly and horrible. Well, actually, it's pretty good. It's a very nicely made desk. It's all metal surround. It's got nice parts on it. And actually, it sounds good. But one thing, one reason why you might use something like this is that you might prefer the mic preamps on this to the more sort of modern digital equivalents. You can also drive the inputs of this desk to make them sort of distort a bit. So if you've got drums and you want to make them a bit crunchy, this is what you use. You may also have an audio interface that maybe only has two XLR inputs, for example, and the rest on the back, you know, inputs three to eight or whatever it is you've got, maybe on jacks only. And you think, well, I want to connect four mics up to this, but I can't. That's where an analog desk can come in. And actually you can pick up something reasonably cheap that will do the job very nicely. It's more expensive to buy an audio interface that's got all XLRs on it. That's where the money is really in the preamps and all of that. So what I've got here is another microphone. You're listening to me on this one at the moment. I've got this mic. It's an SE 3300, but it's a mic that comes in on an XLR cable. So you've just got your XLR input and it goes into this channel, channel number eight of my mixer. Now, what I've got to do first is to set up the channel so that the gain is right. That's really important. If it's too high, well, you may want it higher because of the crunchy drums, but if you have it too high, it's gonna distort. If you have it too low, it's gonna be so inefficient that you won't be able to hear it at all and there'll be lots of noise. All circuits generate noise of their own. All components generate noise. So you have to maximize the input level in order to make that work. The output level of this is a few tens of millivolts. It's tiny. And really, we need to raise that kind of, well, of the order of a hundred times in order to make it usable by other electronics. So I'm going to speak into this microphone with a button pressed in here that allows me to see on this meter up here whether the level is right or not. So obviously at, at the top, it's going to be too loud. At the bottom, or just registering a couple of lights, it won't be high enough. One, two, two, one, two, two. That's pretty good. I've got that right. But there is a gain control, so I can turn it up even further. One, two, 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 two. Or I can just turn it down if it's too loud. So how do I get this into the computer? OK, so this particular desk has got direct outputs, but it's also got these red faders here, which are bus outputs. The idea being that you can send loads of these channels to the same bus if you like. So you can do a, a mix to stereo, for example, if you've got eight mics and you just want to record onto two tracks, this is the sort of thing you do. Now I've got at the moment, this microphone signal feeding bus number seven. Now the output of this bus is a jack lead. So you've just got a jack to jack cable going from bus output seven into input seven of your audio interface. So if I do that, one, two, you can see that bus number seven on the meter is now registering. And if you look over to my audio interface, you can see that there is also a level on channel seven. So the mixing desk output is a jack plug and it goes straight into the jack input of this. Now, it's all analog so far. There is no such thing as direct digital because a microphone is an analog piece of kit and so is a pair of speakers or headphones or indeed the entirety of this mixer. The preamps on this are also analog. They only get changed into digital uh, information once you've got past the, the gain stage, the level control. Then it becomes digital and then the computer does the rest. Out from the computer comes an analog signal, or rather it's digital to the audio interface, and then it leaves the audio interface as a digital 
signal. So I've got this Liquid Sapphire Pro 56, which has got eight line inputs coming from my eight bus outputs on the desk. And then I have a optical cable which feeds my Apollo Twin here. Now the Apollo Twin is only two mic inputs. It's much, much better quality, but you are you know, paying for the preamps. But it does have an extra eight inputs available to it so that you can actually piggyback one audio interface onto another. So I've got this coming in on output seven into input seven on here, and then it gets into the computer on input 15. You think, well, why is that? Well, it's inputs one and two of this, the inputs three to eight or something else, and then you get your nine to 16, which is the next eight channels, which is your analog ones. And you can see at the moment on the computer that the top trace, the top oscilloscope trace, or the, the, the recording is this microphone. So if I tap it, you can see the spikes on the computer screen. The bottom trace is my narration mic, which is quite low level, but it's fine. It's absolutely fine. It's going straight into the Apollo interface here. Now, what happens after uh, the signal goes onto the computer is it comes back to my audio interface, which then comes back on a pair of channels here. And then I have those channels to my master fader, which will feed my speakers. You can also connect things like CD recorders or mini disc or another computer or a different audio recorder to capture your stereo mixes. Most of the time you do it in the box, but if you wanted to go to my old Revox reel to reel or something, that's where it comes from. So I've wired this studio up so there's no patch bay. I've simply wired it to the, the specification that I require for my work. So I've got also the possibility of sending a signal from the computer back to this audio interface, which then has eight outputs on it. So that and then I can feed the outputs to the desk. So there's a lot of jack to jack cabling. You don't need any XLRs because they're on the front or the, you know, the, the audio interface. You just plug your mics in as normal and then everything else works with a jack plug. So it's just lots and lots of jacks and lots and lots of wiring and lots and lots of looms. But once you've got it all in place, it can be really flexible and you don't have to unplug anything. You don't end up with a sea of cables. As you can see, this desk is free of cables. Everything is plugged in under the shelf here. I just pushed it underneath to make some space, but I can still get to the, the EQ and all of that. Now, that's another thing with an analog desk is that the EQ section is usually actually on the face of it quite limiting but when you get into it you find that it's actually very musical it's it you know, deals with a snare drum really well or that you can cut the brightness of an electric guitar really easily without making it sound sort of clinical so there we are I hope that that has sort of cleared up a few of the questions. It's all jack to jack cabling and there's lots and lots of it. It may seem expensive to buy the jacks and don't buy anything but Neutrik jacks because they're the best and they last forever. And once you've done it, you're really in business.